What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I was so stoked for this launch because I have yet to find my holy grail concealer. I feel like I have all these different things that I want in a concealer and I just can't find them in one product. So the based on the formula that Kosas created, I was really excited to try this out. Um, full disclosure, I did a demo and a wear test, but I did get the wrong shade for myself. So I'm going to take you through all of that and really just first focus on the formula. Um, and then I can get into the shade range and wrap it up with my thoughts and everything in a little bit. First, I'll just take you through some of the claims and ingredients that Kosas has on their website. The concealer retails for $28 is supposed to have a medium to full coverage, and it has ingredients that's supposed to make your skin better over time. It's got ingredients like panthenol, uh, hyaluronic acid, peptides, caffeine, and pink algae. So they really put a lot of thought into making this not just makeup, but skincare as well. I can't really speak to the skincare aspect of it because I've only been testing the concealer for a couple days, but that's just some added knowledge for you as you're making your decision if you want to pick it up or not. There are 16 shades of this concealer and I actually DM'd Kosas a selfie and asked them which shade to pick up. So I picked up shade two, which is what they told me to do. And just gonna be transparent up front, it was way too yellow for my skin and too dark. So for the demo and wear test, I am gonna be using shade two, but I'm gonna show you pictures of the shades that I swatched in stores later on so that you have a better idea of how they all look compared to each other. Okay, cool, let's jump into the demo. Hello, it's Saturday, and I'm gonna do a first impressions of the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade two. Full disclosure, it's not really a first impression. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw me rip the package open immediately when I got it yesterday, and I swatched it on my hand. I quickly put some on my face since I didn't have makeup on. Um, so it's not really a first impression. I could tell off the bat that the formula was beautiful and was exactly what I was looking for. Um, but just to be transparent up front, the shade range was really, really weird. It's like super yellow. Um, and so this, this doesn't work for me, I already know. But I'm just gonna show you today what shade two looks like on someone with my skin in case you have a similar skin tone. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Let me look into my mirror. Um, the way I would normally apply concealer is, I'm actually not used to a more full coverage concealer, so I'm gonna take it a little bit slowly. Usually I use the Laura Mercier, what is it, the Laura Mercier uh, Flawless Fusion Concealer in the shade 1N, I believe. And I think that's quite a bit more of like a I want to say light medium coverage. So I was really excited when Kosa said that they were releasing a concealer that was both hydrating and lightweight and miraculously full coverage with, you know, caffeine and peptides, red algae, I believe, and hyaluronic acid. So they have a bunch of skin loving ingredients that I thought were really nice. It seemed like it would be my kind of dream concealer formula. Um, and I have to say, I quite like the way that the formula looks. I just don't think that I could ever really like confidently leave the house with a concealer this yellow. I think that this concealer looks a lot better now that I have foundation on underneath because it the contrast between the yellow and then the pink in my skin is not quite as intense um, because I am wearing the Super Goop CC Cream. I think, I think I could get away with it if I wore foundation. However, uh, I don't really wear foundation every day. I, my favorite thing to do, where is it? My favorite thing to do is wear the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion in one end, and I put it under my eyes, and I kind of dot it around red areas, kind of like spot concealing for foundation. Um, I just find that that looks really beautiful, so. That's what I usually do. I wouldn't be able to do that with this concealer because it makes me look kind of like sick, but I'm just gonna do for now, I'm gonna save my thoughts on the shade range and a couple other things that annoyed me. And I'm gonna save that for the end. And right now I'm just gonna talk about the formula, which I think is beautiful. I'm gonna get up close. We're gonna get really personal here. Is that a dog hair? Oh no, oh no. Yeah, I think it looks nice 
Uh, it looks not cakey at all. It looks nice and dewy. It I would definitely say it's like medium to full coverage, which is awesome. So let's see how it wears. Hold that thought. I forgot to powder and I powder under my eyes every single day to make my concealer last a little bit longer. So I wanna treat this concealer exactly as I would treat any other concealer throughout the day. Now let's go throughout the day and then I'll check in and see how it wore. Hey, I forgot to film my check-in. Um, I was just heading to the bathroom to go to bed because it's late. I looked in the mirror and I was like, Gah! reminded me about the whole thing. So I'm doing it, we're here, let's go. Um, we know we know that the color is not good for me. It's far too yellow. We'll see tomorrow if shade one works out. But um, let's just focus on the formula and the texture and the staying power. So under these lights right now, I think that the coverage absolutely stayed true to itself. I mean, I'm I'm pretty impressed looking in the mirror that the coverage is really is long lasting and pretty phenomenal. It's kind of hard to look past the color difference, but I think I'm just gonna turn my lights down for you so that I can get up close and you can really see the texture. I'm just gonna see, I think, if I can try to pat the lines in a little bit. I think, you know, ooh, interesting. It does feel quite dry because I did set it. Normally I would be able to like tap out the lines a little bit, but it's looking a little crusty. It's definitely breaking up all around my nose. Um, I think that is not a unique experience for me though, because any type of like really hydrating product, I always find breaks up around here where I'm very oily. And I can also see that I, I literally just got a package from Sunny's face and I just threw some blush on and I, I think it like wiped off all of my foundation when I just put it on. Um, so kind of ignore the fact that you can see there's this like big chunk of foundation missing. That's my fault, but you know, I think right there you can see it the most. Um, but I'm not mad about it. I think the texture for a full coverage concealer is nice. I mean, I can tell that even though, just looking in the, in the monitor there, I can tell that even though the color is off, uh, it stayed pretty well. And so I would be curious to see now what it would be like without setting it. So tomorrow, if shade one works out for me, maybe that's the one, I'll do a different test then, but yeah. For now, this is what it looks like, and uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, so that wear test was all over the place. Bear with me, it was my first one. Uh, but getting to the point, the shade didn't work for me, but I thought the formula was pretty nice. I'm gonna take you through a couple pictures of me swatching the shades at Sephora. As you can see, it goes shade three, two, and one. I just wanted to compare the first three shades because I saw a couple people online getting hate for saying that the line was too yellow and only having tried like one or two shades. So I wanted to show you right now on me, on my skin, this just comes across totally as yellow. In fact, the first three shades almost look exactly the same on my skin. Now, I know that that's not the case for a lot of people. For example, my friend Emma, um, she tried shades two and three. They looked crazy yellow and dark on her. And then she tried shade one and it worked really well. She looked beautiful. So she has a really similar complexion as I do. I don't know what it is. I guess I have a lot more cool tones in my skin than I thought. And that's why I want to talk about the fact that I am white and 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a shade for me in a launch. I can be frustrated all I want, but at the same time, like I'm privileged enough to basically always have a shade that I can find that matches my skin tone. So if this range is better for people with warmer skin tones, with more medium deep skin tones, then awesome. For me though, unfortunately it doesn't work. So just wanted to throw in that little caveat because I think it's important to note that most of the time I'm able to find something. I'm also gonna show you a couple pictures here of me showing shade two swatched on my hand compared to a bunch of other concealers that I use. As you can see, shade two is a lot more yellow and a lot darker than the other concealers that I use. So 
I would just, you know, keep that in mind, even if you DM Kosas and they tell you what shade to get, because that's the shade that they told me to buy. I've also heard that the tinted face oils do not correspond with the concealer, like Kosas has said. I can't confirm this because the tinted face oil texture just didn't work on my skin, but I know that there are a lot of people who absolutely swear by the tinted face oil, and they also said that they had to go lighter in the concealer. Just something to keep in mind, if you are a fan of the tinted face oil, I might suggest going to Sephora, doing a couple swatches before you jump right into buying it if you're a little bit on the fence. There are also a couple things I wanna talk about that really frustrated me about the launch of this product and about the marketing for this product. Um, I guess I'm a little bit confused. You know, the founder always talks about how she has this background as a painter and that she has all this experience with color theory and that's why she's so thoughtful in her colors. Um, I remember she said that at least about her lipsticks and I think about the eyeshadows as well. So I do find it a little bit curious that this range is so off for me um, and I know a lot of other people have said the same as well. I don't want to put words in your mouth though. I know that there are a lot of people who have tried this and they said the shades, the shades were perfect for them. So if you love it, that's awesome. If the shades work for you, that's awesome. Um, but I do find it a little bit strange that the founder really promotes the fact that she has this understanding of color theory and then this was such a miss for me. I also kind of want to understand like why put out a range of just 16 shades for a full coverage product. If you're doing something like the Glossier Stretch Concealer that's super sheer, I can kind of understand making a couple shades flex and work for different skin tones, but in this situation, the concealer to me was like definitely medium to full coverage like it claims to be. You don't have a lot of flexibility within shade ranges there, so I think it was really important to nail this and add in a lot more cool and neutral shades. I just feel like like it's it's fucking 2020, you know? Like we gotta be better about shade ranges and inclusivity. And that brings me to my next point, inclusivity. The brand really promotes inclusivity as part of what they value and as part of their marketing campaigns. You know, for this launch in particular, they used a male model, they used models of a bunch of different ethnicities, they used a woman, an older woman that with lines on her face and she's beautiful, but they didn't include those people in their sponsored reviews. And that kind of set me off on this path of like feeling a little bit icky about this product to begin with. When the product first launched and the sponsored reviews came out, I noticed that pretty much all of the creators who did sponsored reviews are pale. Um, not all of them are Caucasian, but I did notice that not, I don't think any of them used a shade darker than shade four, maybe shade five. Um, I know one girl got shade five, but she used shade four. So maybe I missed a couple videos, I'm not sure, but I really dug deep through YouTube to try to find a sponsored review from someone who had a deeper skin tone and I couldn't find it. So, you know, if you are gonna talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. The last thing that bothered me was seeing the reviews on Sephora. Uh, when I first logged on and I looked at the reviews, I noticed that all of the negative reviews were voted down as like not helpful and the positive reviews were voted up as helpful. Um, and what that does is it means when people go to check reviews, the helpful ones appear at the top. At least that's my understanding. So let me ask you this. Do consumers behave like that? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't like I would I would never vote a negative review down as not helpful unless it were truly not helpful um, and vice versa as well. So that to me indicates that Kosas was going on and voting down all of the negative reviews. And OK, do other brands do this? Yes. Is this pretty much standard practice for brands these days? Absolutely. Does that mean I'm okay with it? No. Also, I don't have proof that Kosas did this, but if I'm using my best judgment, I think that it's pretty clear that there were employees who were doing that, whether they were instructed to or not. So all of these things kind of made me feel a little bit icky about this launch. Um, if there were a shade for me, I would still use it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out and buy this product. However, if I'm doing reviews here, I'm gonna be honest about the way that I feel, and I just wanted to share some of my observations in case you guys are like me and you care about those things too. 
No judgment from me if you don't give a shit, if you just want to find a product you like and use it and you want me to shut up, that's totally fine too. But I wanted to share my honest opinions um, and put everything out there. I hope this was helpful for you. I know it was a little bit all over the place. This is my first time doing a comprehensive review, including a demo and a wear test. So bear with me, I will get better over time. Let me know your thoughts. I know that I've kind of opened myself up to criticism here and that's okay. But uh, yeah, I think it's important to talk about these things. So let me know your thoughts. If you tried it, what did you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. And you can also follow me on Instagram at State of Kate. And I hope you all have a great day.